Good morning to all of you. Uh, welcome to National Resource Center, Department of Mass Communication, Tezpur University. Myself, Dr. Neil Ratan Roy, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Education, Tezpur University. Today, I will uh, discuss about a new topics, a new uh, issues in teaching methodology in higher education. In our previous discussion, I have talked about innovative teaching practices prevailing in a higher education and also some pedagogical techniques for effective teaching in higher education level. Today I shall discuss about teaching methodology in higher education. The discussion will be in two parts such as pedagogy to andragogy and andragogy to heteragogy. Effective teaching is intellectually demanding in that it requires the teacher to know in a deep sense the subject being taught. To teach effectively you need to be able to think and problem solve to analyze a topic, to reflect upon what is an appropriate approach, to select key strategies and materials and to organize and structure ideas, information and task for students. None of these activities occurs in a vacuum. Most important of all, effective teaching requires the teacher to consider what the students know to communicate early to them and to stimulate them to learn, think, communicate and perhaps in their turn to stimulate their teachers. In short, to teach effectively, you must know your subject, know your students learn and how to teach. Effective teaching is most solely depend upon the teachers. Students to have responsibilities to learn. Sometimes these responsibilities need to be made explicit. Often an indirect but powerful way of improving your teaching is to improve the ways in which students learn. To know more about how a students learn in the classroom, I shall discuss here some of important methodologies through which a teacher can better understand the students and also the art of teaching. It is very difficult for the educational paradigms of the age to serve the so-called virtual campus of digital era as there is a movement from campus based learning to virtual education. The 21st century higher education sector has come a long way after undergoing continuous alteration from pedagogy to andragogy. Heteragogy, a form of self-determined learning with practice and principles rooted in andragogy has recently resurfaced as a learning approach in higher education. Pedagogy. Pedagogy is the science and art of education. It ranges from the full development of the human being to skills acquisition. The etymology of pedagogy is derived from the Greek word paid meaning child and agos meaning leader of. Thus, pedagogy literally means leader of a child. Pedagogy which is instructor led or Teacher's direct instruction, as it is commonly known, places the learner in submissive roles that demanded strict adherence to the teacher's instruction. It is also known as a teacher, uh, as a teacher or trainer centered approach to instruction, where the teacher assumes responsibility for making decisions about what will be learned, how it will be learned when it will be learned and why it is of value to the learner. In this pedagogy, teacher has to play the major role and the student or the learner has to play the minor role because in pedagogy, teacher has to take the decision about the content, about the procedure and also how much the student has to learn that also. Pedagogy is the 
how of teaching and less about what of teaching. In other words, pedagogy is about the methods and not the subject or content. Pedagogy seeks the answer to three important teaching and learning questions. Number one, what do we want the students to learn? Second, how we will help them to learn? Third, how we will know when or if they learned it? But uh, in these questions, it is found that hardly any scope is there what is to be taught and what is to be learned that freedom is given to uh, less freedom is given to the students. Shifting from pedagogy to andragogy, the pedagogical model has begun to shift and is no longer predominantly being used equally in the teaching of children and adult. Adults are increasingly independent and responsible for their own actions. They are motivated to learn by a need to solve problems in their lives. Adults also have a need to be self-directing. The pedagogical model does not account for such developmental changes on the parts of adult which can produce tension, resentment and resistance in individual. What is andragogy? The term andragogy was coined in 1833 by the German teacher Alexander Kopf, who used it to describe the educational theory of Plato. A fellow German, John Frederick Herbert, disapproved of the term and the term subsequently disappeared from the use for almost a century. By 21, the term had reappeared in Europe and during the 1960s, it was used extensively in France. Holland and Yugoslavia. Andragogy was first introduced to the United States in 1927 by Martha Anderson and Edward Linderman, but they did not attempt to develop the concept. Knowledge in 1980 was exposed to the term andragogy from a Yugoslavian adult educator in the mid 1960s. His definition of andragogy was developed as a parallel to pedagogy. Andragogy is based on the Greek word enar with the stem and ra meaning man, not boy or adult, anagos meaning leader of. Now, who is Malcolm Stafford Knowles? He was the father of adult learning. Malcolm Stafford Knowles was born on 24th August in 1913 and died on 27 November 1997. In 1940, he became the director of adult education at the Young Men's Christian Association in Boston and he, here he wrote a book entitled Informal Adult Education. In 1960, uh, he accepted a position with Boston University. Teaching went from informal environment to formal academic environment. There he met a visiting professor from Yugoslavia who introduced knowledge at the, uh, to the term andragogy, which means the art of science of how adults learn. In 1970, wrote a book, book entitled The Modern Practice of Adult Education andragogy versus pedagogy. <clears throat> now, we should know that how a adult learner learn in their classroom. Especially in higher education, we all the teachers deals with the adult level students. It would be very worthy for a teacher to know the learning style of the adult learner which may help for better teaching. There are certain characteristics of adult learnings are given uh, suggested by some of the scholars. Some of them are like adult needs to know why they are learning, how it will affect them. Adults learner always prefer before going to learn something, they 
ask themselves why they are going to learn it and how the concepts are going to help in their life. Second, adults are autonomous and self-directed. In pedagogy, we, we have seen that children, they are depend on the teachers. They cannot decide anything about the topic. They cannot decide about uh, decide anything about the uh, the methods, and they cannot decide about the consequence also. They are bound to learn. They are compelled to learn in the classroom. Whereas, in higher education, students want to become little bit uh, free. They want freedom in the classroom so that they can learn automatically and self-directed learning. Third, adults have a lifetime of experience. In pedagogy, we have seen the children, when they come to the schools, they come with empty mind and fresh mind. And whatever teacher wants, they can teach and students can learn that. But in case of adult learner, they have already acquired and they have gathered all uh, a lot of experiences in their previous classes, in their uh, earlier classes, which may also help in their future learning. Fourth, adult use a hands-on problem solving approach to learning. The adult learner, they want that whatever they will learn in the classroom, they want it to learn it through problem solving approach. That uh, if any knowledge or any uh, information is going to help to solve some uh, certain problems in their practical life, then they will be ready to learn that concept easily. And uh, at the same time, if the concepts or if the issues are not useful or found to be not useful in their future life, then they won't be, wrought, uh, they won't be uh, ready to listen or learn that concepts. Next, adult wants to apply new knowledge and skill immediately. At the, this is the tendency of the adult learner that whatever they will learn either through their course or curriculum syllabus or in the classroom, they wanted to apply the same concept in their practical life. Finally, adult needs to be shown respect. Uh, in pedagogy, we have seen the students remain passive in the classroom, but in the uh, higher education level, adult learner, they want to be active and then want, they want the respect you know, from the teachers or the instructor. If they get the respect in the classroom or about their knowledge or about their experiences, then they will be motivated and interested to learn. There are certain assumptions of uh, andragogical uh, approaches, such as they are self-directed learner. Adults learner, they uh, want that uh, whatever they will learn and uh, that learning should be uh, from their own or from their own direction. You know, they do not want to listen every, mo every time from the teachers. Okay. They use their past experiences as a resource for future learning. As I have uh, said already, the past experiences, uh, it gives the foundation it gives the foundation for the future learner. So, uh, as a teacher, we must see this aspect also. Whenever we are going to teach something new to the students, we should equally uh, give the importance that they must have some experiences already in their mind. If you do not consider that part, maybe somewhere it will be repeated and they may not get the interest in the class. They are ready to learn related to their social roles. Uh, this is uh, a general tendency of uh, an adult learner that uh, they wanted to play certain roles in the society. The rules may be different types. 
it may be related to their profession it may be related to the society it may be related to their own creativity or own interest so if the knowledge or if the uh, course content whatever we are going to teach in the classroom is going to help in their uh, in their uh, the desert you know rule to be performed in their social life then they will be very much interested and motivated uh, that uh, this may going to help in their future life then they will learn it next they apply lessons to solve problem solve problems immediately problems you know uh, we face uh, in daily life different types of problems and we want that whatever problem we face in our daily life and it must be solved by you know our experiences our knowledge which we gathered or we acquired in the classroom if the knowledge is going to help us it's quite good if it is not going to help our practical life then the adult learner uh, they not um, they will not uh, give any attention to that aspects they have an internal motivation to learn in pedagogy what we have seen that uh, the students or the children they comes in empty mind or in fresh mind so uh, they need external motivation you know that becomes a very uh, important role uh, for a teacher to create motivation in the class or before going to teach anything they need to create attention uh, they need to create interest and they need to uh, create the motivation also if the students are not motivated to learn the things perhaps they will not learn anything but in case of adult learning what we have seen the le learners are internally motivated because they know why they are going to you know uh, why they are coming to this class and why they are going to learn this and what for you know they are going to learn these concepts and what way this will help in their practical lives so they know all these things and which becomes and which gives the strength which uh, creates the internal motivation and uh, uh, you, they, they don't need much external motivation from the external sides adult learners like to be respected that i have already uh, explained uh, in my uh, previous slides uh, now i'd like to say something about uh, you know about uh, about adult learning uh, that certain factors are there uh, certain sources are there which gives you know motivation for learning and how the adult learning uh, adult learner gets the motivation as i have said the adult learner gets the motivation internally so what are the factors what are the sources which gives their internal motivation certain factors uh, i have mentioned here six factors such as social relationship social relationships to make new friends to meet a need a, uh, uh, to meet a need for association or friendships you know so when they come to the class they come to the institution they wanted to make some new friends they wanted to know something new you know they wanted to uh, become you know they wanted to become the part of some association you know this is the their uh, uh, interest this is their in intention and uh, if they get all these in the classrooms or the institution they will be motivated the second external expectation Ex external expectation to comply with instruction from someone else to fulfill the expectation or recommendation of someone with formally authority what they want that uh, beside the regular teacher in the classroom they also want some uh, external 
uh, you know, uh, authority person or external experts, you know, if they get within the class or in the institution, they will become motivated. Social welfare, to improve ability to serve mankind, prepare for service to the community and improve ability to participate in community work, you know, uh, if they get all the specialities in the classroom, they will be motivated. Personal advancement, to achieve higher status in a job, secure professional advancement and stay up to date competitors. They have always wanted to be part of the society either through their profession or through some other kind of services or sometimes they wanted to compete with their competitors. You know, if they get all these scopes, you know, means for that they need to get certain uh, scopes in the classrooms, the freedom, you know, some uh, atmosphere should get in the classroom, then they will become uh, motivated. Then st stimulation, to relieve boredom, provide a break in the routine of homework and provide a contrast to other exacting details of life. They do not want to be sit in the class, you know, continuously for a long time. They want that break. They want break in their uh, class. They need, you know, some relief in between. You know, if they get it, then they will be more motivated. Then cognitive interest. To learn for the sake of learning, seek knowledge for its own sake and to satisfy an inquiring mind. You know, adult learner, you know, what is their characteristic is they do not want to uh, come to the class not only to seek for uh, uh, acquiring the new knowledge only, also, you know, they need to get certain satisfaction also that they have some inquiry in their uh, inquiry uh, in their mind that they wanted to know something new in their own discipline or in their own field. If they get that interest uh, in the class, then they will be the motive, they will be motivated. Now, uh, certain tips for effective instructor and as a teacher, we must know, uh, we have seen that some of the important uh, characteristics of a learner and also we have seen that certain sources or factors which give the internal motivation to the uh, adult learner. Now, as a teacher, we must know some tips which may help us to become more effective in the class. Number one, keep it relevant. Keep it relevant means whatever you will teach in the classroom, you try to give some example, try to relate the concepts, you know, with their practical life by giving more example, give, giving um, real example, giving example from the current situation, you know. If you give this kind of examples in the classroom, then maybe they will be more uh, interested to know. Secondly, remember students background. As I told earlier also that uh, before going to teach to the students, it is the prime duty of a teacher to, lo to know about the learner. If we do not know the learner backgrounds, if we do not know the learner, you know, then we perhaps will not be able to teach properly in the class. So, it is our primary duty to know the learner, uh, to know their background also what is their level, what is their understanding level, what they actually want from the class, what they actually wanted to do in the future also, you know, all these things a particular teacher should know. Next, integrate emotion into lesson. Uh, whatever we teach in the classroom, you know, we should uh, connect it, we should connect it with our emotion also, if possible, you know, emotion means uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi once told that uh, education means, uh, you know, 
it is the de all round development of the body mind and soul so whatever uh, you will teach in the classroom so it should be integrated with the emotion emotion in the sense emotion refers our affective domain where our values our aesthetic sense our uh, you know so the emotional things would be uh, you know involved in that so you have to connect the things you have to integrate the things with our emotions the next point encourage uh, exploration as i have said the teacher has to give give more freedom to the students and also we should encourage them to explore new things the uh, enter world world or uh, world is in uh, is open uh, in front of them to explore the new and new knowledge so uh, when we, we will give them more freedom to explore more and more information more and more knowledge from the different sources then definitely you know they will be interested and you will also become the effective next make assignment convenient it's a very common that uh, in higher education uh, most of the times we uh, try to give them certain assignment uh, and uh, which give them you know which allow them or compel them for self study and in higher education self study is very essential and the self study will um, allow them to express their own um, ideas to use their creativity to use their critical thinking you know their reflection all these things would be possible in uh, self study so uh, when we will select or we will give certain uh, assignment topics to them and it must be you know um, as per their interest as per their convenient we should not give any assignment topic which is beyond of their interest you know if we give in that way then neither they will get any interest nor they will complete it you know uh, naturally so it should be convenient to them so the next point is always uh, offer feedback uh, the adult learner they wants or um, they wants feedback from the teachers so if possible you know try to be very particular uh, whenever you will give give the uh, give the feedback and uh, if you give the positive feedback definitely they will get the energy to learn better in their classroom and uh, next point is understanding how to teach adult so uh, as a teacher uh, you have to be little bit innovative in your class and that how they will learn uh, sometimes it so happen that uh, a common theory a theory sometimes it doesn't work and uh, sometimes we need to be little bit uh, you know innovative in the classroom to uh, to to teach effectively and uh, you will know better about your students so how they were going to learn and how they were uh, learning so based on that you can uh, take some decision and you can teach andragogy and uh, that pedagogy will help also uh, to know about the learner how they will learn how they will learn so now i'd like to uh, say something about uh, that how adult learn and what is the best time to learn number 1 adult learner they feel the need to learn uh, they actually we cannot teach them we 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 cannot teach the students as per our wish if they are not ready to uh, if they are not ready to learn we cannot teach so uh, it's their mental state if it's their mental readiness uh, if they feel then they can learn or if they are not ready to learn then we cannot teach so uh, we have to be little bit cautious in this regard then we have to make them ready in the class they have some inputs into what why and how they learn you know and um, 
as a teacher, as I have said, we have to be a little bit innovative uh, to know about the students that uh, what, why and how they are going to learn. So, we have to know that. The learning content and process have a meaningful relationship to the learner past experiences. It is already being uh, uh, discussed earlier that we have to uh, try to integrate the current knowledge along with their past experiences. Their experience is used as a learning resources. Their past experiences will give the foundation of your present teaching or present learning. So, we have to connect uh, our current lesson with their past experiences. What is to be learned relates to the individual current life situation and task. We always, always should uh, we, we should always uh, keep in mind that uh, in what way their knowledge, uh, the current knowledge is going to help in their current life. They have much autonomy as possible. Uh, when they will best learn, when they will find that uh, they are little bit autonomous, there is no any pressure, pressure from the top. So, when they will feel that certain autonomies are given to them, then definitely they will learn more. Then the learning climate minimize anxiety and encourage freedom to experiment. Often we see in uh, very, uh, you know, that uh, complex situation in the, if we uh, pressure creates by the teachers in the classroom, then the students will not uh, going to learn anything. Rather, the classroom should be little bit, you know, uh, encouraged, encouraged uh, you should uh, give the encouragement and uh, or motivation to the students, so that they can learn better. And also, they will learn better when they will see that there is a cooperative learning climate. It is not that uh, in higher education, individual learning is there, but uh, they will also learn better when there is a cooperative learning scope is there. Then group work, you know, community work, then project work, you know. So, when a group of people will be engaged, that will give the best sources or the better sources uh, for their learning. Then they will also learn when they will see that we create mechanism for mutual planning. And then when they will uh, be involved in the planning means course planning, the objective planning, then other activities planning, when they will be able to involve with the teachers or the in instructor, you know, so then they will learn better. Then we arrange for diagnosis of learner needs and interest and enable the formulation of learning objective based on the diagnosed needs and interest. So, when we formulate the objectives for learning or education, we should involve the students to diagnose their needs, you know. When we will be able to diagnose the uh, relevant needs or objectives, then we can obviously, we can give the better resources to them. We design sequential activities for achieving the objectives, you know. Uh, when the learning things or the learning resources or the learning materials are arranged very systematically, you know, sequentially as per the objectives, then they will learn. There are four principles of andragogy. Uh, these principles need to be, you know, followed by each teacher in higher education, such as involvement. Knowledge suggests including adult in both the planning and development of instruction. What he suggests that in the planning stage as well as the development stage also, you know, we should involve the learner in that process. By giving them a voice in what they learn, they will be more engaged the same can be said for evaluation. By allowing students to offer feedback, both the teachers and the students can improve the stay engaged in the instruction. Experience. By using past personal experience, 
as the foundation for learning activities adult learners have a strong basis for new information this includes both positive experience and negative ones if mistakes can help students understand how a lesson is applicable to their life it will help next relevance instruction that has immediate relevance and impact to a learner's current career or social role will help more resonance if a student is a professional writer he or she will likely care little about a subject like nursing understanding uh, your students population and developing relevant lessons are key factors next problem centered more than anything else adult learner wants to engage in lesson that cent center on a current problem they have how will this knowledge help them in the future can they use it to get that promotion they have always wanted questions like these are good ways to gauge how engaged students will be knowledge outlined a seven steps process for faculty to promote andragogy means how to promote andragogy from pedagogy to andragogy you know knowledge has given certain steps such as develop cooperative learning environment we should make the classroom such where cooperation is possible the teachers are going to cooperate with the students as well as students also go going to cooperate with the teachers and cooperation may be within the students group involve learner in the setting goals so whenever we will finalize the goal any kind of project to work any kind of problem uh, um, problem based work or assignment work or case study or whatever you know activities we propose to do so in that case is the students should be involved to set the goal next diagnose learner needs and interest we must give the importance to the learner what is their interest what they want if we ignore them then they they will not going to listen or they are not going to learn from us help learners formulate objectives based on his her interest and needs design sequential learning experiences to meet these objectives whenever when these objectives will be formulated based on the student's need then the learning ex experiences should be arranged very systematically meet objectives with material and resources it's not like that you have designed certain courses or you have uh, decided to uh, teach certain things in the classroom but resources are not available but resources resources or the materials should be available hmm? then only we can teach evaluate the quality of learning and impact on future learning and uh, it is the prime duty of a teacher to evaluate the quality of learning what they have learned how they have learned you should give the feedback whenever the uh, that uh, possibility is there you know so different types of evaluation techniques we have like uh, formative evaluation and summative evaluation so in this regard the formative evaluation will be very much helpful for students development now uh, you know the concepts of pedagogy and andagogy will be uh, better understood if we compare the concepts and certain aspects of pedagogy and andagogy pedagogy and andagogy as i have already uh, discussed earlier the pedagogy uh, that is only for the children and andagogy it takes uh, it talks about uh, uh, talks about the adult learning so role of learner role of learner in pedagogy is dependent means they are dependent on the teacher but role of learner in andagogy is self directed they don't depend on the teachers if teachers uh, give more freedom then they will be more happy and they will learn better role of faculty members uh, role of faculty members in pedagogy uh, that uh, they need to deliver the knowledge they need to give the uh, information to the students Whereas in andragogy, the role of faculty is 
facilitating means they are not going to teach anything they are not going to the, give the things directly rather they will facilitate how to learn what to learn when to learn you know they will give certain guidelines so they will learn accordingly experiential experiential learning is pos uh, not possible in pedagogy means uh, there is no scope to experience anything because that is restricted in the classroom you know uh, they are dependent on the teacher whereas in andragogy uh, students can learn the things through their experiences through their learning by doing experiences through problem solving approaches through project based experiences the primary activities uh, in pedagogy the primary activity is learning uh, lecture based objective testing whereas in andragogy primary activities are experiential strategies group work case studies uh, simulations field experience varied uh, types of testing etc readiness uh, the students are told when they are ready uh, that uh, teacher gives them instruction that you be ready i am going to teach something but in andragogy you know they decide what additional knowledge is needed because they are already known you know they have already some knowledge you know so you need not to tell them what need to be learned you know so they will learn automatically you know that what is important for them so they will learn automatically sequencing step by step uniform progression is there in pedagogy uh, but in andragogy based on learner skills and readiness learning uh, in pedagogy facts which will only be useful later on but uh, in andragogy process oriented for future potential uh, means uh, they will learn the things or the concepts which will have some application in their future life curriculum in pedagogy curriculums very simple to complex but in andragogy curriculums are competency based or categorical is group covers in pedagogy that is k to 12 means kindergarten to plus 2 level whereas in andragogy it includes the students beyond plus 2 in pedagogy motivations are external means uh, student needs to get the motivation from the teachers or the senior from the seniors or the parents whereas in andragogy motivations are from the within they don't want anything from the outside they will be self motivated in pedagogy knowledge done without question whereas in andragogy you know knowledge must understand why it is important in pedagogy readiness to learn what is required in andragogy when content is relevant they will learn in pedagogy the main focus is subject but in andragogy main focus is life centered so uh, here we have seen that how pedagogy and andragogy is different and uh, pedagogy mainly they are they are dealing with their children up to plus 2 level but uh, in andragogy this approach is deals with the uh, students after plus 2 and we have also seen the qualities the characteristics of learner and we have also seen some of the tips to be followed by the teachers in uh, higher education or in higher level classes to promote andragogy if we follow the pedagogical skill in the higher learning perhaps we will not be that much effective if we use the and pedagogical techniques in the higher education so with this uh, i'd like to conclude here thank you